to Sour React. Today, I'm going to be continuing list month with the top 10 worst albums of the year. And there are tons of albums that I could have put on this list, but I just narrowed it down to 10, you know, nothing major. But I will give you guys some honorable mentions, just like I did in the last video. So, I feel like some of these albums you guys may be really surprised with. And this is just in the honorable mentions area. So, I'm just going to list them all out and then we'll get into the official list. Honorable mentions. Future. Save Me. Schoolboy Q. Crash Talk. Tyga. Legendary. DJ Khaled. Father of Assad, Chris Brown, Indigo, and Nav, Bad Habits, also Scarlord Infinity. Now, we got one out the way. I'm just going to go ahead and get right into this shit. Top 10 Worst Albums of 2019. Number 10, Ed Sheeran. Number 6, Collaborations Project. Now, this album isn't really hated by me just because of Ed himself. I feel like Ed did a pretty decent job for what he was going for on this project, but I just do not understand the features on here. Like, you have Meek Mill on here, you have Future, you have like Cardi B. I just don't understand, man. Like, yeah, we know we know he's like the biggest pop artist in the world right now. But Ed Sheeran just really seemed like he was dipping his bag into something that, you know, he really didn't need to do. And I actually take back feature. He had tons of people. He had Young Thug, Eminem and 50 Cent, Travis Scott, Justin Bieber, Stormzy, Chance the Rapper, which fucking sucks. His song sucks. Camila Cabello, Khalid, just a whole freaking mixed bag. It's like an alphabet soup of features, and it's just, they throw it at the wall just to see what sticks, and that is basically what is on the album. And it's just, ugh, like, this is probably one of the most random albums I have ever heard. It doesn't have a direct sound or anything. And it would have been so much better if Ed Sheeran just put out a regular album just by himself, like he usually does, without it being loaded with features. And that's basically all I really had to say about that. Number nine, YG, for real, for real. All right, I'm gonna just come right out to say it, man. YG's never topping Still Brazy. He's never topping it. And it shows. This album was dropped, I feel like, a couple days right after Nipsey also passed away. And I think on an album cover of this, he has, in memory of Nipsey Hussle, like, you know, written somewhere on the cover. And it was a nice gesture, I guess. Like, it, it's, a, it's a nice gesture for somebody who passed away. But, God, man, like, this album was probably one of the most boring and dull albums of 2019. I just got so bored of listening to it. Like there like there is no good songs on it quality wise. I just feel like this man just raps about anything and he tries so hard to make it seem like he's being serious with it. But we know that he's not. I don't know if that makes any sense, but this guy just tried to put together a whole bunch of tracks that didn't really correlate each other and just call it an album. It sounds like a bunch of leftovers, if anything. Like, he has freaking Four Loco on here, which is awful. He has Stop Snitching on here as well, I think as a bonus track. I'm not sure. I haven't gone back to it since I listened to it on here. But... This is easily one of the most forgettable albums, and you know, within the new year coming up, 2020, 
2020, I'm not going to be surprised if nobody talks about this album ever again or as much as they should because this, this, it, it's so forgettable, boring, it just, it did absolutely nothing regarding Nipsey. I mean, I know he had a feature on here, but it just, he's never talking still raising. I mean, dude, it's, it's fucking trash. <laughs> Number eight, Lil Pump, Harvard Dropout. Yeah, you're surprised, right? You you guys must have forgotten that Lil Pump dropped an album early this year, I think in March. This shit flopped hard as hell. Like, like immensely. Like flopped. If they if you look at the word flop in dictionary, this album would be right next to that. This album was just a step down from what Pump used to do. And even before then, I didn't really like Lil Pump like that. Like, the production on here is, is trying too hard. I appreciate Lil Pump for trying to actually have decent flows and seem like he's trying to rap better, but it just, like, I, I don't understand, man. It, it just... Like Lil Pump, like you aren't a good rapper. You're trying. I appreciate that, but you you are like just you're like trying to do something that nobody asked you to do in the first place, and it it just resulted in you flopping this hard. And we haven't heard anything else from this man since then. So. In my eyes, he's most likely going to fall off within the next year or two because the fact that most of you guys are probably surprised that he surprised that ugh. the fact that some of you guys are probably surprised that he dropped an album this year and you guys forgot about it just shows you how the money has fallen. You know, this this guy is. This album was a flop, and it just did not do anything. I think it flopped on the charts as well, too, so that doesn't make it any better. Trippy Red, exclamation point. This is Trippy Red's worst album. Like, his worst album. This shit was awful. Like, I don't know what the fuck he was trying to do. It seemed like he was trying to go for more EDM slash rap route. Like he had a song with Diplo on here, which I think was the intro track. I only liked maybe two or three tracks off this entire album. It just sounded like a whole bunch of leftovers. Basically the same exact reasons why I don't like this album applies to both YG's album and this one, because it sounded like a bunch of leftovers and it just, it just seems so thrown together, so last minute, because Chippy Red probably haven't, hadn't made anything new yet. And he just said, you know what, let me just clear out this file and just call it an album, why not? And it just, it, it, it's, it's fucking awful. Like, I think the only songs I actually enjoyed off this album were Lil Wayne, And I think the song with I think Lil Baby and Lil Keed, I'm not sure it, it was those two. I'm pretty sure it was Lil Baby, but those two songs are the only ones I actually enjoyed off this album. And I still haven't gone back to it and I'm pretty sure nobody has gone back to it as much because this is definitely his worst album. I don't know what the hell he was thinking with this, but please trippy, don't ever do this shit again please ugly god bumps and bruises <sighs> this was not worth the wait this was not worth the wait at all ugly god i don't understand what you were doing with this like you made it seem like you were turning over a whole new leaf and you're going to be 100% serious and actually try making a decent album. 
and you give us this, you give us this crap. I mean, I'm not gonna knock you because I mean, you know, life happens and you know delays happen, but the delays in this situation, like the constant delays for this album, did not help it at all. Like I'm pretty sure people forgot to even drop the album this year, but I haven't because I've listened to it and I reviewed it on my music debater page. And it's it's uh, like oh my god, I, I don't understand, man. I really don't like. You could have been something better than what you are right now. Like you, you really have fallen off quality wise, and I'm pretty sure nobody's talking about you like that. Like I'm not even trying to be an asshole or anything like that, but it's just. This album was so thrown together and so half-assed. Everything that you said that this album was supposed to be, it's nothing like that at all. Like, it's not serious. It's basically the same exact shit that you always talked about, which is moody fucking females and all this shit, man. That's, that's, that's basically the entire premise of this album, and it just, I was waiting for that one track to, like, be, you know, serious, just like you said in Advertise, but we didn't get that on this album, unfortunately. Oh, God, it's just like, with each album I list out, it just gets worse. Why Kill Osiris, The Golden Child, this nigga cannot sing. And the gall, the disrespect to say he's the king of R&B. This is repulsive. Like, this album was literally, like, torture to me. This is ISIS music torture to me. This man literally is, like, trying so hard, so hard to belt out high notes when his voice obviously can't handle that. It just sounds terrible. It, it just, oh, my God, like... I don't understand, man. Like, like the label. I don't know if it's the label. I don't know if it's or Cyrus himself. But like, whatever it is, I don't know what you were trying to do on this album. Like, apparently you came into the game of rapper. I don't know why he didn't just rap. Like, even on like his XXL freshman freestyle, he was singing over a trap beat, and it sounded terrible. Like. He had maybe the second to first worst freestyle this year. And now he put out an entire album dedicated to singing over trap beats. It's just absolutely disgusting. And I just, I just, just I, I did, do not like it at all. I'm pretty sure nobody liked it like that. Nobody did. My brother's a fucking big fan. And he didn't like it. I mean, I don't know what else to tell you, man, but, like, please, please find, find your, find, find your role, dude. Know your role, bro. Know your role. Know your role, bro. Please. <sighs> Number four, NF, The Search. Now, I already know people probably going to get annoyed by this, but this is probably one of the most try hard I want to be sad albums I have heard this year this album takes itself way too seriously like this album literally gives me vibes of that one weird ass kid that sits all the way in the in the back of the classroom writing freaking death notes and shit in his notebook told him oh my mom took my xbox my mom took my ps4 oh my god the world hates me ah <sighs> like that's the entire that's that's basically what i got from this album like he talked about the same exact thing over and over and over for like three or four albums now dude like talk about something else please like, the subject matter is literally the exact same thing. And a reduction seems like he's trying to be this dark and mysterious figure that's, like, in a circus somewhere, and he's just tr trying to be creepy and edgy, and it just, it's so, ugh, oh my god. Like, all I get is the freaking, oh, ribbity ribbity rap, lyrical miracle, li spiritual lyrical miracle, oh my god, I'm a miracle. Like, that's all I fucking get from this album, and it just... 
It got so old so quick, man. Number three, oh boy, Chance the Rapper, The Big Day. I mean, like, you you are an independent artist, Chance. You're you're an independent artist, okay. This is what you want to give us, like, you could have done anything you wanted with this album. Anything you wanted. And this is what you give us, dude. You gave us a pop rap album. I don't know what Spotify has go going on with pop rap, but everybody's favorite genre is pop rap. So I mean, this is basically the album that they're trying to force upon you. This is a pop rap album. Like, why didn't you have better features? Why didn't you have better verses? Why was Shawn Mendes and Nicki Minaj on here? Why was the baby Megan Thee Stallion on here? Why is this album existing? Like, why? Like, you made us wait for this long to drop an album. And when you do, it ends up being your worst project. Your mixtapes are so much better than this crap. And I mean, I would understand completely if you had no control over who was featured on it and all that other crap, but you're not on the label, dude. Maybe distribution deal, but you're not on the label. Like you're an independent artist, you could have done anything you wanted, and this is the, this is this is the ideas that you gave us. This is this is the product you gave us, and it just it just sounds like a pile of crap. Like Jesus Christ! And then you had the nerve to go on Twitter and talk down on your fans, saying that they liked your old shit because they didn't like this album. Like, dude, seriously, you're a grown ass man. Like, just take the criticism. And just better yourself instead of just going out and telling fans to eat a dick because they said they didn't like this song that you put out, aka Hot Shower, which is fucking awful. Instead of doing that childish shit, you could have put all that energy you had into making better music, yet you didn't on this album and it shows and it's one of the worst shit that you ever released. Number two, Vic Mensa, 93 Punks. I mean, like, now it's just, now we're getting down to the nitty gritty, dude. I mean, Vic, I mean, listen, I've stated numerous times that I was a fan of you. I like your music. I'm probably one of the very few fans that you have left, and it's becoming very hard to defend you at this point for this album, this, this catastrophe of an album. What the fuck happened to you, man? Like, seriously. Like, out of, ugh, like... I really, like, listen, I don't want to be too cliche and say, Oh, I miss the old Vic Mensa, but... In this case, I really do miss the old Vic Mensa, like the internet tape Mensa. The freaking, there's a lot going on with Mensa. The fucking, there's the, the, the autobiography Vic Mensa. Like, Jesus Christ, dude. I mean, like, I just don't know how you go from all of that to this. Like, dude, like, three years sober. Three years sober. Are you dead ass, bro? I just don't understand, man. Like, how, uh, if you don't know what 93 Punks is, it's Vic Mensa's band, brands, whatever, a collective, whatever, clothing line, just basically just an entire brand in itself, and he put out an album with the band, 93 Punks, that he formed not too long ago, and it's basically just another crappy rock rap record, like, basically, it's like Vic Mensa's rebirth, in a way. Like Lil Wayne's Rebirth is like Vic Mensa's version of that album. And it's one of the worst fucking things that has dropped this year. I just don't understand what the hell this man was trying to do. Oh my god. Like, it, it pisses me off almost because it's like, you, you over here, like, you over here getting mad at people because people aren't supporting anymore, and plus the shit you said about X just doesn't make it any better no more. 
I, I mean, I don't know what else to say. I really don't know what else to say. But I just hope that either Vic Mensa stops this rock shit or tries to better it. Or just stop making music for a good while because it's, it, this shit is getting bad. Like, it's becoming very hard to to uh, defend you at this point, Vic. It, it really is. It really is. Like, when I tell people that I'm a Vic Mensa fan, people start laughing at me. That's bad for you. And the number one worst, the number one worst album of the year. I mean, you guys are surprised. This is Logic Confessions of Dangerous Mind. I mean, this is probably the most unlikable, childish, petty, crybaby, fucking moany, groany, bullshit ass album I've ever heard this year in my entire life, almost. This album is extremely unlikable in every way possible. And not because of the production. First and foremost, I really want to apologize to the six, like Logic's productor, Logic's producer. Because the beats on here are great. I like the beats on here a lot, but Logic just murdered every single one of them in the worst way possible. And when I say murder, not in the good way where he said, oh yeah, he killed this beat, like, oh my, this fire, like, no, 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 not at all. This is a massacre of great beats. Like, the beat on Bobby is fucking insane, but Logic just destroyed it. Well, I don't know what the hell Logic is has going on for him right now, but you need to, like, reevaluate your entire career, dude. Seriously, like you really need to reevaluate your entire career because you all over here crying on Twitter, getting mad at people because they make fun of you and they don't want to see you have fun and they don't want to see you involved and all this other crap, yet you give us shitty lines on damn near every song on this album. Like, this is a sellout album, if anything. This album is a travesty. This is probably one of the worst albums of the decade. I surely don't know what the hell you would think with this. I don't know if you write down your lyrics anymore. I don't know if you even give a damn about your lyrics anymore. Oh wait, you don't because on Don't Be Afraid to Be Different, you clearly state that you don't give a damn about these lyrics because we should feel it. In what world do we feel that you suck a dick just to prove that you ain't homophobic? It's a fire line. In what? world do you actually think that's fire and that we will feel that shit when you said that line did you really feel like damn bro this is really gonna kill him right here this is really gonna kill him right here yo so many people are gonna relate to this shit and it's gonna sound fire did you really think that shit bro really you really thought that shit was cool bro and the fucking hooks on here are dumpster the features on here are dumpster except corday he did pretty well but this album, oh my god, like, I'm like getting pissed off talking about it because it's like, you, like Logic, you have nobody to blame but yourself because of how bad you have gotten. Like, your fall off is just upsetting. You went from making great mixtapes, like Welcome to Forever, the Young Sinatra series, great albums, like, Under Pressure, and what I think is your best album, incredible true story to making this slop like what the fuck and they have the gall and the nerve to go after people because they think that oh they're just making fun of you because you keep saying biracial and blah 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 and then you go and give us that shit verse on fucking twisted like you need to reevaluate yourself you should be ashamed of yourself for the, the crap that you put out this year you should be ashamed of yourself and I know I'm talking about the album right now, but I'm, I'm just saying, like, in general, like, as, as a person, like, you really need to reevaluate yourself. You need to take a break. You shouldn't be shitting out three albums a year, two albums a year, 15 singles a year. In the same time, you should not be doing that shit because not only are you going to burn yourself out, you're just going to just put anything out there just to say that you have a good work ethic. When in reality, it shows that you don't give a fuck. 
Passions of a Dangerous Mind is the worst album of the year and I'm pretty sure nobody's surprised by that shit because everybody, even friends that are hardcore Logic fans who would defend him till the fucking end has said that this is the worst shit they have ever heard this year. I need to stop talking because I'm, I'm, I'm getting pissed off. Um, yeah, that's the top 10 worst albums of the year list. Um, if you really enjoyed this video, I appreciate it. Like, comment, subscribe, blah, 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 blah. You know, you already know what to do. You already know what to do. Summer React. Goodbye. And good night.